Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on Animal Welfare Certified Bone-In Beef Short Ribs, Sustainable Wild-Caught Sockeye Salmon, and more. Find sales on Parmigiano-Reggiano, Charcuterie and Ground Lamb. Grab an Olive Bull Bread from the Bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. Today on CityCast Houston, the rodeo isn't all glory and winning belt buckles, especially for the women of the sport. Beyond the competition comes unequal pay and sometimes not making any money at all. Plus, what happens when the adventures of motherhood start? Joining me today is professional cowgirl Taylor Hanchi to talk about the ups and downs of being a world-class rodeo athlete. And don't forget that Rodeo Week is brought to you by Tacovas, sellers of the best cowboy boots and Western apparel that honors the true spirit of the rodeo. And after this interview, I'll have your Tacovas tip of the day, so stay tuned. It's Thursday, February 29th. I'm Rahil Ramzanli, and here's what Houston's talking about. Taylor, welcome into CityCast Houston. How are you this morning? I'm really good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so pumped to talk to you. It's such an interesting profession that you have. But before we talk about what you do for a living, this is going to be the most random question you've ever gotten in an interview, okay? You're in the thick of it, competing at the rodeo. You're also raising horses. Do you watch Yellowstone? And is it a good depiction of the ranch life? I know this is so random. (laughs) I, I actually do watch Yellowstone, yes. And there are definite times when I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cheesy or that's not realistic. But for the most part, I mean, there are things on there that happen, you know, that in, in our everyday life. And I think it's pretty cool um, to see something that we experience every day get put in the spotlight, you know. And I think people that don't experience it are like, oh my gosh, that's so wild or that's so crazy. And I'm like, honestly, that's something we deal with all the time. Yeah, like a rattlesnake to the face from a briefcase. That's a <laughs> that's an everyday thing, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> that is so cool. So you are a professional cowgirl. You compete in barrel racing and breakaway roping. Now, I'm sure listeners have seen these events before the concerts at the Houston Rodeo, but could you describe them for us? Let's start with barrel racing. What exactly is that? Okay, so barrel racing is where there's three 50-gallon drums, basically. They're big metal barrels put into a triangular pattern, um, and we go around them on horseback in a cloverleaf pattern. So you can go to the right barrel or the left barrel first. You complete the pattern, and it's the fastest time wins. How fast is your fastest time? So it depends because uh, depending on the venue, the pattern might be set up a little bit different. So what's very unique about Houston Rodeo is it's a pretty small pattern. You know, we're running 15, 14 second runs. Wow. But the ground itself, you know, the stadium is huge. Whereas um, we might go to a rodeo in Oregon and the fastest time is 28 seconds. But all kind of depends on the venue and the, um, the pattern. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now explain breakaway roping. Okay, so breakaway roping um, is the cowgirl is on horseback and there's a calf in the chute. When the cowgirl nods their head, the calf is released from the chute and we chase the calf, rope the calf. It has to be around the neck um, and then our rope pops off from our saddle horn and that's when the time stops. Whoa. Again, fastest time wins. How fast is your fastest? Uh, 1.8. What? it happens fast it's like and that's not even like the fastest time ever like i think one five is probably the fastest time ever so it gets very very fast and for me i think the spectators like it because it happens so fast you know if you're not watching in that 1.5 seconds that it happened you're just catching it on the replay yeah that is intense right there so you compete in both of these that's pretty rare yeah um I wouldn't say there's many girls that do both. Mm. It is very challenging to do both. Um, And up until three years ago, the breakaway roping wasn't very popular in the professional circuit. So we were able to do it um, at the college level and at the amateur level. And until um, really 2021, 
was it a, an available sport event for girls at the professional rodeos. So it's fairly new to the professional rodeo game. And so a lot of girls did it in college or at the amateur level and then kind of quit because there was no future after that. Um, So now you're seeing a lot of people like continue with it or to start back. You know, there's a lot of ladies that haven't roped in 10 years that are wanting to rope again because of the breakaway being included at professional rodeos. Oh, that's really cool that they now have that. Um, I've always wondered this. Why is barrel racing a women's only event at the Houston Rodeo? So the barrel racing and and the breakaway, so they're both only women's only events. And they are governed by the Women's Professional Rodeo Association, which is one of the only women-run associations in um, the United States, but it's been around since like the 1900s. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I don't want to admit that the guys would be better than us, um, and especially in the breakaway roping, but it would really kind of be an unfair advantage. And so um, this is a way to include us women and to give us a little bit more of an even playing field. I know all the Cowboys get all the coverage and you kind of talked about it right there, like this evens a playing field a little bit. What is it like being a professional cowgirl? Like what are some of the challenges? You know, um, I think a, a lot of the things are, are, are things that other women experience in, in their workplace. You know, I think I for sure have felt the pressure of whether I want to be, a, you know, a cowgirl or if I want to be a mother or if I, if I should stay home and do wife things. And I think that's something that a lot of women experience in the workplace, you know, on which way to go and to, and to do both, you know, it's definitely an option, but it's, it makes it a little bit harder. Um, and with there only being two events for us to compete in, you know, you've got to be great at two events. Whereas the guys, they have maybe six events that they can, they can try to be good at, you know, and again, it's a very rare in the guys events for them to be great at more than two events. You know, some guys do two or three, but for the most part, every guy and every girl has like, one event that they're truly great at and making money at. Do you think more women would be competing professionally if there were more events that were opened up, right? Instead of just these two? Yeah, um, I don't know, because I I think the other events are definitely um, a lot about strength and stuff that that women aren't just naturally, you know, we, we don't, we're not as strong as a man, you know. And so um, I don't know if they, if they would do more. You know, I think a lot of us, somebody has to stay home, <laughs> right? So when we're married, most of the time, one of us has to stay home because we have horses and animals and all that stuff at home. And so if one of us is leaving, who's taking care of, of everything back at home? It's like, well, who's feeding the horses and who's checking on the horses and who's making sure, like, it's not something that we can just like, walk away from. And so um, it's definitely a profession that you're like always on. You're always on the job. Real quick, how many events are you competing at in a calendar year? Oh, a um, hundred. What? Yes. Yeah. And so we, we also drive to all of all of our events for the most part. I mean, we might fly on occasion, but we're driving. And the other thing that is very different from any other professional sport is like we pay to compete. Okay, so when we show up to a rodeo, we pay anywhere from two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars to compete, which goes towards the purse that we may or may not win. And if we don't win, we just lost that money. Like it's just gone, you know. Mm. So it's it is highly, highly competitive. But if you're not good, you're not surviving. You know, I mean, it just it doesn't make sense economically to go and lose money. Whoa, that, that's crazy. I didn't realize just how vital it is for y'all to win these competitions to bring home that money. And I say y'all because your husband, Shane, who is also a professional cowboy, is out there competing with you. And I, I, I really want to talk about that relationship in a second. But because of that, not only are you a professional cowgirl, but you also have a second career as well where you are raising horses. Yeah, I think what's what's looming for any professional athlete is that it could be over in in any instance, you know, um, if you get injured or whatever. And so as you get older, I think you start trying to prepare for something like that to happen. You know, like what if something happens? What am I going to do? You know, what, how are you going to make money? And so, um, you know, as Shane and I have both progressed in our careers, we've started other businesses or other side hustles 
that help us know that, you know, it's not going to be all great and wonderful if you get hurt, but it will be okay and we will survive. Tell me about this, because in other sports, we see that there are issues when it comes to men's sports versus women's sports, right? You think about compensation, TV rights on the basketball side. Women's soccer is wildly popular and they don't have the same pay as the men's soccer side. Are there any issues like that going on with professional cowgirls and cowboys? Um, yeah, for sure. I would say there is. Uh, you know, I try not to make the excuse that it's just kind of um, coming on. You know, I, I do feel like to a certain extent, we need to pay our dues a little bit um, because, like I said, Breakaway is just this is the third year to be a professional event at the radio. Um, so we are definitely working towards equal added money, um, but it's something that needs to happen. You know, we do all the same things as the guys. We practice, we travel, we compete, you know, when we try to be great. And so to, to me, it needs to have the girls events need to have equal money. And for the most part um, in the barrel racing, it is, but barrel racing has been around for you know, 80, 100 years, you know, so they've kind of, you know, built up their repertoire with the rodeos and and done that. Whereas the breakaway is still kind of fresh and people aren't, aren't as sure about it. You know, people that haven't seen it don't fully understand it and don't see the excitement on the fans faces, but really any rodeo that has graciously added the breakaway and see the the fans interact and get excited about it. They're like, okay, we get it. Let's have you back next year. And next year you'll have equal added money. Um, But again, since we pay to compete, a lot of our added money comes from the competitors themselves, you know. And so unless you have great rodeos like Houston and San Antonio and and rodeos like that, that add a substantial amount of money for the purse, most of that money that we're getting back if we win comes from our competitors, you know, and that's where I would like to see the biggest change is that we're not necessarily competing to play. Like, I don't know any other professional sport that they say, okay, today to shoot basketball, to to play on the team, you've got to pay a thousand dollars. You know, that's just not how it works. And once you're a professional athlete, they're paying you to, to be there, to show up. And then when you win, yes, you get all the sponsorship and the bonuses and stuff like that, which I totally agree with. But they're not having to put their own money on the line anymore once they've made it to the professional point. Houston, it's rodeo time. Whether it's your first rodeo or your seasoned pro, your local Tacova store is the place to go for the finest handmade cowboy boots, jeans, belts, cowboy hats, and apparel for men and women. Their perfectly understated approach to Western wear will have you looking good and feeling great from head to toe. And if you've never owned boots before, nothing would make them more proud than to put you in your first pair like they did for me. Tacova stores also offer complimentary services such as free drinks, boot shines, and custom leather stamping or branding that will make your boots truly one of a kind. And just in time for the Houston Rodeo, Tacovas will also be offering complimentary Pendleton whiskey cocktails, rodeo-themed branding irons for your hats or leather goods, and the chance for you and a friend to win pairs of new boots starting February 23rd through March 17th. So stop by your neighborhood Tacova store in Rice Village or City Center and get raring to go to the rodeo. Tacovas, don't go gently. The Houston Rodeo, tell me about it. What's it like competing here at the Houston Rodeo with such a big stadium? And you kind of hinted at it like it's a big ground, right? It's massive. What's that like? It is massive. And so my grandparents have season tickets to the Texans. Okay. So I've been there um, as, as a spectator for the football games and stuff like that. But to walk in, first of all, and see the stadium transformed into a rodeo arena. I mean, like it is massive. It is by far the biggest arena we'll go to all year long. And then just be put the spectators on top of you, you know, and I think probably I don't know, probably 50, 70% of them probably are coming for the first time for the concert. Let's be honest. But they get there and then there's this rodeo going on and they might have never seen this rodeo. 
And all of a sudden they're into the rodeo. And so to take somebody that doesn't know anything about rodeo and now make them a fan and they're like all into it. That's a pretty cool experience to see somebody go from one end of the spectrum to another. Um, And honestly, I know like everybody thinks like Southern hospitality and you would think, especially with rodeos being real Western lifestyle country, like that all the rodeos would have this grand hospitality no no rodeo even compares to the hospitality that Houston Rodeo gives their their athletes. They treat us so great around there that everybody truly just wants to come to Houston and hang out at the Houston Rodeo because of how great we get treated. Wow, that's amazing. And they also live broadcast the rodeo as well. I know other rodeos do it as well, but like they have a full production. Uh, I know Patty Smith, one of our good friends, she's been there for the longest time. Like she's there doing the sidelines, introducing y'all. Like it, it is a true production. It, it's yes. so cool to see. Yeah, it's it is the rodeo that is like has the most professional um, sport aspects to it that that we ever go to. Shane, your husband, is also a professional cowboy. What is that like being on the road with him? You mentioned y'all drive everywhere. I'm sure you're competing at the same events. What is that like working not only as professional cowboys and cowgirls competing, but as you mentioned, you also have a business. You know, you're raising the horses. You're getting that done. You're with him all the time, it sounds like. I am with him a lot of time, uh, a, a lot of times, and it, it can be challenging. I'm going to be honest. Um, when we travel, we're driving a lot of the time. And then we live for six months out of the year in our horse trailer. So um, our horse trailer has like a living quarters. Like it's kind of like a camper. I would, I would compare it to a camper with a place to put um, our horses in the back. Okay. So this is like a, you know, 120 square foot. I mean, it is small okay (laughs) and so you put two adults who are competing for a living in 120 square feet and you go through the emotions of winning and losing and being frustrated and all that together and it is the the best and worst experience you can have you know um when you're winning and you have that high you're getting to experience that together you know and then when you're losing, I mean, you're also trapped in the truck or you're trapped in the the trailer together. And so you have to experience that as well. So I would say um, it is never just like an even like, oh, today is a good day. It's like world ending or the best day ever (laughs) most days, you know, and then there's challenges that go along with it that don't aren't even to do with rodeo you know like what if you have a flat tire or what if your horse gets hurt you know it's those things i think that add on to the stress of just competing for a living so you said 100 events a year when you are competing how many miles is that driven like have y'all calculated that um it depends every year um but anywhere from like 70 to eighty thousand miles (laughs) oh my god Mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot you are a trooper, both of y'all. That is incredible. And y'all are really good at what y'all do. Like you are world-class athletes. That is fascinating to hear that, you know, you're driving on your own. You're you're bringing the horses. You're living in this small space. That, that must just add so much fuel to that fire of you just have to win. You have to win and you have to love the ups and downs. Like, I, I you know, nobody loves to lose, but I think... Um because you've lost and because you've struggled, it makes that win so much um, sweeter. And so if you don't love it, like it's not, it's not worth it, you know, um, just because the struggle is is definitely there every day. And let's add a twist to this now. So not only are you and your husband competing together professionally, you're on the road for all these miles together, but this year is a little bit different. You are getting ready to welcome your first child. How awesome is that? Congratulations. That is so amazing to hear. Thank you. I, um, I'm i very uncertain of how it's all going to go and how we're going to make it all work because, again, I just don't know about throwing a child in a truck and trailer and yeah. going 60, 70,000 miles a year, but um, we're going to hopefully just figure it out. I'm trying not to make any um, solid plans. I'm just going to kind of feel it out and see, how, see where it goes. Um, but, I mean, yes, am I, like, worried about – You know, when uh, it's a little boy, when he's crying at night and Shane should probably be getting rest because he has to compete the next morning or or even me, you know, what are we going to do? You know, because at the end of the day, like 
I, you know, I think, and Shane thinks we're both normal people, but really we're professional athletes. So we need to sleep. We need to, you know, eat properly. We need to do all these things. But I think throwing a baby in there, you now have a little bit different priority. And so it'll be very, very interesting to see how it goes for, for us. Are there any other professional cowgirls that have gone through this that you know of? Like, how did they balance it? Um, so, like I said, it, it's a little bit different because so and up until three years ago, there wasn't these professional rodeos for, for cowgirls to go to. And so when they got pregnant or when, when they started having kids, you kind of just stayed home. Not a whole lot of women take their families with them. You know, I would say maybe there's a handful that, that take their families with them. But other than that, um, they spend a lot of time driving back and forth home so they can be with their family because it is hard. I mean, think about how long a child's in the car seat for as much as we're driving, you know? Um, it's also great though, because of all the places that that little child will get to see, you know, we go everywhere from Washington to California to Mississippi, you know, like we literally go all over the world. And when we're not hustling to get to the next rodeo, the time you get to spend and the, the beautiful places you get to see is something that not a lot of people or kids get to experience. Yeah, that is going to be a life experience for that young man whenever he is hitting the road with y'all. That's an incredible journey right there. But oh my gosh, I'm just like freaking out right now because <laughs> I have a one-year-old, a 17-month-old, and we're thinking about going to San Antonio and just a three hour drive we're dreading because you're right, like babies do not like sitting in car seats. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Taylor, that's going to be a rough one. There's no way yeah. to sugarcoat this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have, have to check in with me and make sure we're all still, <laughs> still making it or we'll, we'll see where I am or where Shane are in our, our career after having a child because we do, we want to give him everything that he wants and deserves. But um at the same time, again, this is how we make a living. And so um, it, it's a very much something that we've thought about and, and stressed about. But we're, we're just going to try to see and figure it out as we go. It's the only way to do it. The best plan is to have no plan and it will work out. You'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I'm a planner for the most part, but I've decided that the no plan is the best plan as far as this goes. Is there anything you would change, you know, you, now that you are starting to have a family, more cowgirls will hopefully have families and they're thinking about this. What would you change to, you know, make this a little bit more accessible, to make this more practical for females who want to pursue not only this career and be professional athletes, but also, you know, raise a family, have a family? Yeah, well, the, for, the, for the girls that, that want that want to do it both and, and want to be great at both. Um, so I know that they are working on this, but um, currently when Shane and I go to a rodeo, we're not guaranteed to be up at the same time. So like, like the Houston Rodeo, for example, I went ahead and entered because I naively thought, okay, maybe I'll get to compete. But I was not up until the, towards the end. So two weeks Two weeks in. Well, Shane is up starting today. So that's a two week difference where what what would we have done for those two weeks when I was up at, at a certain time and he was up at a certain time? So it makes it hard logistically when we're entered at different rodeos at different times. You know, there's times when he jumps in the truck with somebody else and I'm in the truck alone because we're just up at different times. And so they are working on making that where a husband and wife can buddy together and they're guaranteed to be up at the same time. And I think that'll make a huge difference because at this point, the moms that have their kids out there, when it's their time to compete, they hand their babies to one of their friends and say, I'll be back, you know, um, which is totally fine. But if you, if you don't know somebody there that day, what are you going to do? You know? And so to have your spouse there um, to be able to help you, um, parent is something that I think would make a huge difference and be something that mothers would say, okay, since I can do that, let's, let's rodeo, let's take the kids and let's do this together. Versus, like I said, a lot of them say, okay, you go ahead. I'm going to stay home. Taylor, that was enlightening. I'm so glad I had a chance to talk and learn a little bit about your career and your profession. That was a blast. Thank you for joining us. That was awesome. Thanks for having me. That was Taylor Hanchi. You can learn more about her with the links in our show notes. 
Hey, do you want even more rodeo content? Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, Hey Houston, because it's rodeo week there as well. And Brooke has some awesome stuff for you to read. It's now time for your Tacova's tip of the day. Are you ready for your Tacova's tip on how to enjoy the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo? Well, you better be because it's Rodeo Week here on CityCast Houston. Obviously, I love the rodeo, but even I can admit that sometimes the crowds can get a little overwhelming. So in that spirit, I wanted to share some ways you can dodge the lines this rodeo season. First off, steer clear of spring break week no matter what. Even during non-peak hours, the rodeo grounds will be packed with families looking to take advantage of their days off from school, so plan accordingly. Secondly, one of my favorite things to do is take a quote-unquote sick day from work to hit up the rodeo early during a weekday. This is probably the best way to avoid crowds. And you know what? As I say this, I'm realizing my boss is listening. So um, let's go to the next one. My last recommendation is to get to the concerts at NRG Stadium at least two hours early. Not only will you skip the lines, but there are tons of things to see and do before your show, which we'll get to in tomorrow's tip. Overall, plan ahead, make a tight itinerary, and take all the guesswork out of your trip. And with all that extra time, you can head to the Tacova stores in Rice Village or City Center to pick up a new pair of boots. And remember, don't go gently. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. Good luck with the child. (laughs) Thank you.